Alright guys, welcome to another video. Bit of a noisy one. There's a moss going over there. I got the engine on here. I'm about to pull up the anchor. I've just dropped Marie off at the airport. She's flying to Jakarta and Amsterdam, uh, in Istanbul and France today. And I am sailing to Australia. Well, first I'm sailing to Tuol, where we were a few videos again, and then to Thursday Island, and then hopefully to Cairns and Brisbane. It's gonna be a rush because it's end of the season. This trade wind's gonna start probably sometime, and I'm doing it all by myself. Anyway, I'm gonna pull up the anchor here now and uh, get moving. I'm about two hours behind schedule. The tide turned two hours ago. I should have gone down these channels in the tide, but uh, I've still got four hours of water moving in my direction, so I'm gonna take it and then maybe we'll anchor up and we'll see. Anyway, let's go. I got all the dinghy tied down, motors on, uh, outboards all strapped down. We've got food, we've got water, solar panels, batteries are full. Everything's good to go. I'm in a good mood. It's nice weather. Let's do this. There's Greg and Kick over there. Boat called Black Swan over there. Greg and Kick you've seen before, they've been in a couple of the videos. They're staying around here in Raja Ampat a bit longer. And I'm off on my own. Okay guys, we are on the move. Well, when I say we, I'm meaning me and Shahelion, my partner in crime. We sort of started off this trip this way and now we're gonna be doing the last big leg. It's about, uh, I think it's around uh, 2,600 miles down to Brisbane. And there's only about five to six weeks left before normally trade wind season kicks in and it's still cyclone season so yeah I'll definitely be waiting for windows of good weather hopefully four or five day windows and then I can just do four or five overnighters like you know try and get 700 miles or something in, in a window and then stop for a few days hide somewhere from the wind and then go again when the window presents itself yeah but I don't know we'll see how we go anyway I'm going to two aisle first that's uh, about 300 miles, 320 miles from here. And then I'm gonna clear out of Indonesia there and also wait for the next, well, first I'm gonna wait for the weather window there and then clear out and then go to Thursday Island, which is about another 700 miles after that. But we'll take it step by step. I've got about a month backlog of other videos from Raja Ampat that you're watching in the meantime. And by the time you watch this, I'll probably hopefully be in Thursday Island already and that's where I'll be uploading them. All right, I'm underway. I'm getting out of the harbour here now, as you can see. All the panisis and liverboard dive boats are all behind me. And now I'm going into this big group of channels down through here. It's about 30 miles of just mangrove islands and channels. And uh, yeah, getting the current down here. But I've been sitting in Sarong Harbour for, oh, I think three or four days now. And my speed wheel, a crab or some mussels must have grown in there. It's not turning, I'll show you. It's not vital, but it's good to know when you've got current, how much current you've got. Based, you know, you can compare it to your GPS speed over ground and then, okay, well, what's the difference? Well, that must be the current. Oh, wow. Ah, oh, look at this. Ah, oh, Marie's gone and left me a bunch of little notes around the boat. What a sweetie, eh? Ah, oh, I feel sorry for you guys. I feel sorry for myself. So I'm going to be alone now, but I feel sorry for you guys. I think most of you enjoy watching her and listening to her beautiful accent more than my ugly old mug. 
but you have to put up with me. She might make the odd cameo. She might send me some little clips from France and eating cheese and, uh, you know, skiing and enjoying the cold water. Maybe even a hot shower, who knows? But uh, yeah, you'll have to put up with me for the next couple of months. She should be back in about June, maybe. She'll fly to Australia and then we're gonna sail the East Coast, hopefully, of Australia, because she's never been to Australia, I have. Gonna show her a bit of that and then hopefully by the end of the year, be planning to go to New Zealand. That's the plan. We'll see how we go. Long steps before then. Anyway, I'm gonna go and well, I'm gonna go and put this somewhere nice, and then I'm gonna go and uh, pull the through hull out. It's always a bit of scary moment, and um, fix the speed wheel. All right, so here it is. Obviously, when I pull that speed wheel out, potentially a lot of water comes in, but it has a little flap actually that flaps up and stops, I would say 80% of the water. And then I've got this, just a blank that I whack in there quickly and then that, you know, then we're watertight again and then I've got all the time in the world to clean the actual wheel. That's always a bit like nerve wracking. Oh, get it in, get it in. But anyway, we'll give it a crack. You guys can watch how I do it. So it's probably half a litre of water came in, but I'll just, um, you know, sponge that out into a pot. And then I'll clean the wheel and we'll do the process in reverse. No, go and check upstairs, there are no boats around quickly. It's a chummy boat. Uh, what is it? A squid. Nighttime squid boat. I might wait till we just pass that before I... Uh, yeah, I'll probably wait till I pass that before I go down and fix the speed wheel. Safety first, guys. I can be a bit blase about safety. You guys probably see that every now and again. I have told myself I'm gonna wear a harness uh, on this trip. Well, mostly, for sure at night anyway. And uh, yeah, I'll try to mostly. <laughs> I'm pretty bad with that. I have good balance and I feel safe and I know when it's bad weather and when there's weird waves i do wear it but i you know you guys are constantly telling me you gotta wear your harness yeah it's a pain in the butt though these things run a generator at night and just you know yeah these things run generators at night and they've just got big lights all around them and just blast light into the water and then they drop nets down and pull up I think squid and shrimp and whatever else maybe prawns I don't even know how it all works but yeah they just sit out here anchored and uh, just sleep all day and work all night okay we've got some free space in front of us I'm gonna go and finish this wheel there's the culprit there's the culprit, there's a slug or some sort of, yeah, just some weird growth in there. I'll give that a bit of a clean and we should be all good. Alright. Beautiful, spins pretty freely now. Sometimes when it gets a bit clogged, I'll leave it in a glass of um, vinegar for 10, 12 hours or overnight and that cleans it right up.
make sure that's working before I clean up. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful, job done. Beautiful evening here. Been basically motor sailing down these whole channels. There's no wind in here, it's land all around. As you can see, it's a lot of palm trees and stuff around. Beautiful evening though, and I've uh, the tide's against me now, so I'm only doing four knots, but I'm just pushing on for a couple more miles to get to an anchorage, and then I'll stay there the night and then catch the tide out in the morning. And uh, yeah, I'll be out in the ocean. I think it's uh, 280 miles from there. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. I'm looking forward to getting out there and. Just getting in the ocean again, doing a bit of a passage. It'll be, yeah, 48 hours, hopefully. If I can uh, catch some wind. There's not gonna be much wind at all. This is a real bad period, but I just gonna get to two isles so that I can have a jumping off point for the longer passages. And, um, you know, like, then if I see a window, I can just clear out and go. Whereas if I'm waiting up here in Sarong, I've got to go all the way to two, I'll clear out and then, yeah, anyway, you understand. So yeah, pretty, um, pretty boring day, but it's the first day alone for a year now first day solo sailing for quite a while as well um, yeah just trying to keep myself busy you know cleaning parts of the boat and I was moving stuff around inside and putting away the laundry that I got when I left Sarong and just trying to keep myself busy I'm not thinking too much and uh, Marie got safely to Jakarta so she's all good she's been busy she'll be in a couple of hours boarding her flight to back to Europe Right guys, good morning. I'm just motoring out of the channel right now. You can see behind me here, I'm just got to go out this gap and then hook a left. And then it's 280 miles down to Tua. If you look back to our last 10 videos, I'm sort of retracing those steps, but not stopping anywhere. So we go down sort of, well, 40 miles past Mazul, but then to Fuck Fuck, Kaimana, Triton Bay, and then yeah, down to Tua. Uh, but uh, yeah, as I said, I won't be stopping anywhere along the way. The anchorage last night was back in that bay and I had internet there and checked the, the windy this morning. Yeah, not looking really promising. Uh, no wind today, probably. I mean, yeah, the weather reports here can be wrong. I'm hoping they're wrong, but basically no wind today. And then tomorrow, a little bit of wind. It's saying six to eight knots and 10 to 15 knot uh, gusts. So that's, and a bit a bit in front, a bit beside, a bit behind, a bit the other side, a bit all around the place. So basically when it's like that, variable, it just, the weather report doesn't know. So, but what you can gain from that is it won't be good wind. It'll just be whatever comes along. So I'll just have to be a bit aware, have my sails up. There'll probably be squalls. Uh, I might welcome them even just to get some wind. Some of you might say, well, well, why are you going? And in, in answer to that, the five days after these two are just even worse. And 
looking forward, I'm against the clock here. Um, the, the, every, every week I'm late, it means down the east coast of Australia, there's more chance I'm going to be battling headwinds. And down there, it's trade winds and like, you know, not nice to be sailing into. Around here, it's calm water, it's all enclosed, sort of. If I have to be motoring, I'd rather be motoring here than in Australia. Uh, yeah, not that I like to do that, but it is the way it is. And either I go now or I wait a whole nother season, which means not going down to Brisbane until November, December, which is a long time. So I'm trying to make it. But if I get to two islands, it's just no weather windows on the foreseeable future. It could be that I reassess and decide to go to Darwin instead. We will see. There's no problem. The good thing is I'm in a boat. It's my home. It's relatively seaworthy. Cosmetically, it's pretty ugly, but, um, and I can go anywhere. I just got out of the channel and a bit of wind has picked up. Would you look at that? So I've got the main side up already. I'm about to pull out the jib and we'll see how we go. It's only about 10 knots, but it's, uh, sort of, it's at about, it's at about 40 degrees. So that's sort of good. I might be able to make some use of it. Anyway, let's pull out the head sail and see how we go. go we're hard on the wind actually we're 30 degrees but we are what are we doing yeah, we're in six knots still a bit of current here because we're just exiting the mouth of the river oh i did not expect this if we get every hour i get of this wind i am very happy it's just one hour less motoring we wouldn't need to be this hard on the wind but still <laughs> Better than motoring. You. Well, boat settled down. Yeah, we're on six knots. Just beautiful. <laughs> Who would have thought, eh, after moaning about motoring for the next 24 hours or 48 hours? But anyway, knowing it's Indonesia, it'll probably in 20 minutes it'll just die out completely. But let's uh, let's be positive and hope that it stays like this. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, settle in and read my book. making a quick coffee and I found note number two. She's so sweet. I feel bad because I didn't do anything like that. Yeah, I'm a terrible, terrible lover. She's amazing. I don't deserve it. Oh, another one. She made me a loaf of bread before she left. Wow, look at a beautiful one too. Keeping me happy. 
And I put some peanut butter. Oh, look at this. Is this the best girlfriend ever? Uh, I was feeling pretty lonely before. And seeing these little lights makes me feel more lonely, but also makes me feel warm inside. She's so good. What a wonderful life! How amazing is this? 